Hi, I'm Tim. In this lesson, you'll learn how to play the first part of Beethoven's Fur Elise. Before you begin, you should know some fundamental piano concepts like the names of the notes on the keyboard, how to read the notes on the staff in treble and bass clef, and how to read rhythms. If you're not familiar with these concepts, you can learn them in the basic series of lessons available in GarageBand. You can also use the glossary at the top right of the screen for more information on some of the topics covered in this lesson. Ludwig van Beethoven was a German pianist and one of the world's best-known composers. He was an extremely important figure during the transition from the Classical period to the Romantic period, which took place during the early 19th century. He was one of the leading forces responsible for expanding both the form and the emotional range of music. Beethoven originally called this piece Bagatelle in A minor. A bagatelle is a short, light composition, usually for the piano. He composed the piece in 1808, but it wasn't published during his lifetime. A copy of the score was found after Beethoven's death with the words Fur Elise written next to its title. In English, this means For Elise. Most theories suggest that it was dedicated to a woman he fell in love with who didn't return his affection. The entire piece has three large sections. In this lesson, you'll learn the first section of the piece, which is the one that most people are familiar with. This section has three main phrases. The first and third phrases are almost exactly the same, so we'll call them both A sections, and call the middle phrase the B section. Before you get started, Go to the play chapter of this lesson and listen to this part of Fur Elise all the way through, so you'll have a better idea of what you'll be learning. Beethoven wrote Fur Elise in the 3 8 time signature. Like 3 4 time, 3 8 has three beats per measure, but each eighth note gets one beat instead of each quarter note. I'll play the first few measures of the piece while counting so you get the idea. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The tempo marking for Fur Elise is poco moto. This means a little motion. Think of playing the piece at a moderate, flowing tempo. Sixteenth notes are used throughout the piece. While sixteenth notes can seem intimidating at first, they aren't really that fast since we're in a 3-8 time at a relatively slow tempo. We can count the 16th notes for the 3-8 time signature using ands in between each beat, like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and… As we learn the different parts of this lesson, I'll sometimes count using ands to indicate the 16th notes, and sometimes without, for an 8th note pulse. The original score for Fear Elise shows that the piece should be played with the sustain pedal. Pedal markings are shown under the staff with P-E-D, an abbreviation for pedal, at the point where the sustain pedal should be pressed, and a star at the point where the pedal is released. When you're using the sustain pedal, keep your heel on the ground and press the pedal with the front of your foot. When the pedal is being held down, change it with a quick up-down movement. The pedal is used in Fear Elise to blend the sound of some of the notes together. Here's how the opening phrase of the piece sounds without the sustain pedal. And here's the same passage using the sustain pedal as Beethoven indicated. For this piece, it's important to use a quick up-down movement of the pedal so the chords don't start to blend together. This usually happens at the end of each measure. With practice, using the pedal will become second nature. Fear starts with a very famous two-note figure, which moves softly between E and D sharp using your fifth and fourth fingers. 
Then during the rest of the opening melody, watch for the D natural. And finally finish with your first finger on A. This opening figure repeats a few times throughout the piece as a signal that the music is returning to the beginning. Play that with me one time. One and two and. The opening figure starts on the beat before the first measure. It should be played very delicately, almost like the melody is fading in, with a slight swell in the middle. It's important to keep the 16th notes rhythmically even. Play it with me again, starting as quietly as you can. One and two and. Since there's a slur over this opening melody, you should play the notes legato with a connected feeling, then gently lift with your wrist to release the A at the end of the slur, like this. Play it with me one more time, gently lifting with your wrist at the end of the slur. One and two and. From there, the melody continues. I'll play the right hand part for the first four measures. At the end of the opening melody, your first finger finishes on a very quiet A. The next figure starts on C with your first finger, moving up the notes of an A minor chord. Finishing on a B and lifting at the end of the slur. Think about quietly sneaking the first note in, swelling through the slur, and backing down at the end. Play that with me. One and two. Again, one and two. The next figure is the same rhythm, starting with your first finger on E and playing up the notes of an E major chord. Watch for the accidental G sharp. And lift on the C at the end of the slur. Play that with me, keeping it quiet and the 16th notes even. One and two. Again, one and two. Each series of slurred notes requires you to move your hand to a new place on the keyboard. To play Fairlease evenly and consistently, you need to prepare your hand for each new figure. This means that even before you lift your hand at the end of a slur, you should be anticipating your next hand position. Play the first part of the phrase with me, starting with the opening melody. One and two and. Try it one more time. Play as quietly as you can at the beginning of each figure. Swell the volume a little in the middle and gently lift at the end of each slur. One and two and. The second half of the phrase is almost exactly the same as the first half. It starts on a low E before playing the opening melody again and finishes with a slightly different figure. Start with your first finger on the low E, then play the octave E to begin the melody as you played it before. Then play the same notes for the second figure, and play the E again, this time closing the phrase with the descending melody to end on A. Play the second half of the phrase with me, beginning with the low E. One and two. Try it one more time, really backing off the last note. 
one and two. Now play the whole phrase. Start off very quiet, giving a little swell to each group of notes. One and two and. It's a good idea to practice each of these figures separately so you can concentrate on playing them with an even rhythm. Then you can practice the right hand for the entire A section in the practice chapter of the lesson. Make sure you're comfortable with the right hand notes before you move on to learn the left hand. In the A section, the left hand part moves between the notes of two chords, A minor and E major. For the first figure, based on the A minor chord, start with your fifth finger on a low A, second finger on E, and your first finger up to the octave A. Each left hand figure starts at the beginning of a measure. Play these three notes with me a few times, remembering to lift at the end of the slur. One and two and three and. For the second figure, based on the E major chord, move your hand down to play an E with your fifth finger, up to the octave E with your first finger, then cross over with your second finger to play a G sharp. Since you have to make such a large jump within the slurred group, it's important to stay low and close to the keys when you cross over. Do your best to keep these notes connected. Try it with me a few times, playing the G-sharp very quietly. One and two and three and. When you put both of these figures together, remember to anticipate your next hand position before you finish the group you're playing. That way you can quickly move your hand into position and be ready to play the next group in rhythm. Now play back and forth between the A minor figure and the E major one. One and two and three and. The sustain pedal synchronizes with the left hand part helping to blend the notes of the chord together. You should press the sustain pedal as soon as the first left hand group starts, then use the quick up-down movement at the beginning of each measure, along with the start of each left hand group. Try it with me, keeping the notes light. One and two and three and. When you play both hands together, the right hand and left hand alternate. Here's the A section with both hands, starting with the right hand opening melody. When one hand is playing, the other should be moving to its next position. Try playing the first part of the A section with me. Use the pedal if you feel ready. One and two and. Now let's try the entire phrase. Don't use the sustain pedal when the opening melody comes back the second time to keep the notes sounding clear. 
One and two and. When you play Fear Elise, this phrase repeats twice at the beginning. There are a lot of things to remember in this first phrase of music, and it can take some practice to get it right. Along with the notes and rhythms, play with a light touch, pay attention to each slur, and use the sustain pedal at the beginning of each left hand group of notes. Practice the right and left hand parts separately, and then both hands together in the practice chapter of this lesson. The first phrase of the B section of Beethoven's Fair Elise has a similar rhythmic motif to the A section, but it switches to a C major tonality for the first few measures. Here's the entire phrase. For the right hand, the rhythm stays almost the same, with legato groups of four notes. The main difference is the last note of each group is now a dotted eighth note, so there's no rest between each group, making them sound more connected. The end of the A section finishes with your third finger on an A. To begin the B section, you need to move your hand up to start with your second finger on B. Play that with me. One and two. One and two. The next group starts with your first finger on G. Then reach up almost an octave to F with your fifth finger, and back down to a D. When you play this group, try to keep your first finger in place while you play the other notes. Don't play the note, but remain in position like this. It'll make it easier to find your way to the next group of notes. Play that much with me. One and two. Again, one and two. Since your first finger is in position on G from the previous group, just move your first finger down to F and play the same figure a whole step lower. Play it with me, leaving your first finger in position after you play the F. One and two. Again, one and two. The last group of the phrase repeats the same figure. Move down to start on E. Try that one. One and two. Again, one and two. Leave your first finger in place on the E at the end of the phrase, and you'll be ready to play the next part of the piece. Let's try the right hand part for the first phrase of the B section. Hold the notes at the end of each slur a little longer, connecting each legato group together. One and two. One more time. One, two. Before you move on to learn the left hand for this phrase, take some time to practice the right hand part in the practice chapter. The left hand part for the first phrase of the B section is very similar to the left hand part for the A section with different chords. The first chord is a C major starting on a C with your fifth finger, to a G with your second, to the octave C with your first. Next is a G major using the same crossover with your second finger as you played on the E chord before. Start on G with your fifth finger, up to the octave G, then cross over to the B with your second finger. 
And the last group of the phrase is the same A minor pattern that you played in the A section. Play those three groups with me using the sustain pedal with a quick up-down motion with the first note of each group. One, two, three. Again, two, three. Now let's try putting both hands together for this phrase. We'll take it slow. One and two. And again, one and two. In the practice chapter, you can use the exercises to help you learn this phrase. The ending of the B section moves back to the opening melody, with a series of E's at different places on the keyboard. This part involves some tricky fingering, where your hands end up almost on top of each other. I'll play it for you along with the opening melody as it returns to the A section. For the entire transition phrase, there's a note played on every 16th note. I'll play it for you while counting. One and two and three and one and two and three and one. Since this phrase depends on both hands playing together, to make sense of the rhythm we'll learn both parts at the same time. Begin with a low E, two octaves below middle C, with your left hand fifth finger. Then move up an octave to the next E with your first finger. Then play the E above middle C with the first finger of your right hand. Play that with me a few times. One and two and three and. Again, one and two and three and. From there, your right hand plays another E, then up an octave with your fifth finger. Try it with me. One and two and three and. Again, one and two and three and. The next set of octave E's are exactly the same as the two E's played with your right hand, but this time the left hand plays them so your right hand is ready to play the following set. The notation shows the left hand staff now in the treble clef. Play that with me. One and two and three and. Again. One and two and three and. Finish the series of E's with your right hand, repeating the E with your first finger, then up the octave. Here's the entire series of E's. Play that with me, keeping the 16th note rhythm steady. When you're comfortable with all the notes, use the sustain pedal through the entire series. One and two and three and. Again. One and two and three and. Just after the right hand finishes this series of E's, the left hand starts to suggest the opening melody again with your third finger on D sharp and your first on E. Then your right hand plays the same thing with your second and third finger. Back to your left hand. Then back to your right hand, starting with your third to your fifth. Then you're back to the opening melody to finish the last A section.
Here's the series of slurred D sharps to E's using both hands. Play that with me at a slow tempo. Focus on using the correct fingers as you play, and don't use the sustain pedal for this part. One and two. One more time. One and two. Now play the whole transition phrase, starting with the low E with your left hand. Keep the rhythm steady. Two and three and. Once you've learned the left and right hand parts for the first phrase of the B section, play it with the transition phrase to lead you back to the final A section. After the B section, you can end the piece with one more pass of the A section. The only difference from the first A section is that you end with an octave A in the left hand along with the last A in the right hand, like this. Fearless can be played with a lot of dynamic feeling. The entire section of the piece you learned in this lesson should have a light flowing quality. The A section starts off very quiet, which is called pianissimo. You can then contrast the quietness of the A section with a slightly louder start to the B section, medium loud, or mezzo forte. Then gradually get quieter through the B section until you're back down to a very quiet pianissimo for the final A section. Beethoven didn't intend for the piece to end here. He wrote two more sections that are much more challenging. If you'd like to learn some other music, you can find more piano lessons for classical and pop music in the GarageBand store. I hope you have fun. One and two and. One, two, three. 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 One. Two, three. One and two and
One and two. One, two, three. 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 One and two. One, two, three. One, two, three. One and two. One and two. One, two, three.